Welcome back. This is Chris and my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome. Uh, the day today is November 12th, year of our Savior, 2017. And we're talking about some things that really hit home. So um, I got a little energy in there. I got a little mad, and that's okay. Um, this is talking about Strong's Concordance, part three. Strong's Concordance, part three. Now, what's interesting is that you have Philip Schaff. We have the... Uh, RV, which is the revised version, 1881, led by Westcott Hort, connected to Roman Catholic Church, connected to the Jesuits. We have Madame Blavatsky. We have Philip Schaff. Philip Schaff, ladies and gentlemen, handpicked people for the American Standard Version, which is just the counterpart of the revised version. They are one, ladies and gentlemen, and Philip Schaff had what was it called ladies and gentlemen he put forth the parliament of the world religions in chicago now listen to this ladies and gentlemen is this what you want to be connected to because this is what uh, these are the people that showed up representing not christian face ladies and gentlemen but what do we have here 1893 we have the jain preacher from vichand gandhi of jainism we have also the Buddhist preacher, all right? We also have the Sulyan Shaku, the first American ancestor of Zen. And then we also have the, uh, um, the Swani Vakananda, whatever it is, of Hinduism. Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and it goes on and on and on. This is Philip Schaff, ladies and gentlemen, and he handpicked James Strong, and James Strong was connected into butchering the Word of God, and that's what pastors use today to define the Word of God. Go ahead, my brother. All should be clear. The American Standard Version is a counterfeit Bible from a counterfeit text, translated at the very least by deceived men. James Strong was one of these men, and his bias is reflected in his concordance definitions. Neither Strong's Concordance or any other reference should be a believer's final authority. Nothing should be the final authority other than the Holy Bible as God has preserved it for us in the King James Bible. Thus, any believer who quotes Strong as an authoritative authority at the expense of the King James Bible is reckless and deceived. The next time you feel the urge to show off a little instead of consulting corrupt authorities Amen. such as Strong's, Thayer's, Vines, etc., which spread doubt concerning the authority of the Scriptures, Amen. why don't you dazzle your congregation or your friends with a thorough knowledge of the words God has preserved for you in English with the King James Bible? You and your congregation or you and your friends will fare much better. Amen. Because it's a living word. Thousands of places have been altered and butchered. Now, we talked about butcher, right? Bruce the butcher, right? Metzger in German means butcher. Higher critics, Weissop, Illuminati, Jesuit, man of sin, son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, ladies and gentlemen. If you're skilled in the Word of God, especially the King James Bible, you should be able to identify this system that has been tampering with God's Word. Satan is trying to, is tampering with God's Word. Yes. You're foolish and naive if you don't recognize that, ladies and gentlemen. We need soldiers for God that will follow and stay, make a stand, ladies and gentlemen. That's what this is about. Now, what's interesting is, just a little bit more comparison here, Hebrews 13, verse 18, talks about honestly, honestly. But you know, when you're talking about James Strong, he was not honest. So guess what? He changes it to honorably. Then in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 12, honestly, he changes it to becomingly. Because he was not honest, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so moving forward, we're going to have a, we're going to look into um, the, the Strong's Concordance. I'm going to hold it up, right? Can they, uh, let me keep my finger here. Can they see that? Yep. All right. See, it's the new Strong's expanded concordance. Exhaustive. Of the, uh, exhaustive. Exactly. 
Now it says right here, quote, for over 100 years, Dr. James Strong's monumental work, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, has been the most widely used Bible concordance ever compiled. And then he's also looking at, and they go, well, look, we've taken it a step farther because we've also put in what? You guessed it, the Vines Complete Expository Dictionary of the Old and New Testament. And, you know, we got to put in some Luciferian lexicons as well. Let me continue the quote. We have the standard dictionaries such as Brown, Driver, Briggs, Hebrew, and English lexicon, the Bauer, Arndt, Gingrich, Danker, yeah, we're going back to 1881, we're going back to the Revised Version, and also the American Standard Version, so we got Bauer, Art Gingrich. You remember Gingrich is on the Revised uh, Version, and he wrote a book called The Kabbalah, right, <laughs> and he loved, yes, Madame Blavatsky, and also Besant, Annie Besant, that great Luciferian Satan worshiper that was also a welcome, yes, welcome at the Parliament of World Religion in 1893, hosted by, you guessed it, Philip Schaff, who handpicked James Strong and Thayer, the Unitarian. Let me continue. And also we have the Theological Word, word Book of the Old Testament. Wow, isn't that exciting? So, moving forward, let me go back to the back here, because when you're looking at the concordance, it has the Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary, which would start with an H and a number, and then you would have the Greek dictionary, um, which would have a G followed by a number. So that's what people like to do. They're like, wow, man, this is what it is. So now we're going to recommend, this is what is recommended to understand God's Word is you can't understand the Word of God by reading the Word of God. You need to go to number 67. You need to go to get yourself a good Strong's Concordance who was a Satan worshiper, ladies and gentlemen, and that's how you understand the Word of God, right? Well, let's go for it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going back in here, what does it say? For many people, Strong's unique system of numbers continues to be the bridge between the original languages, ladies and gentlemen, the original languages of the Bible and the English King James Version. Because remember what Blavatsky says. You can't trust the King James Bible. you got to go back to the originals. And that's what they've been saying. Let me continue here. And he says, Strong's Hebrew and Aramaic Dictionary. About the words of the Bible in their original language. Alright, scrolling down we have... Vine's Complete Expository Dictionary of the Old and New Testament Words, and we have Brown, Driver, Briggs, Hebrew and English, Lexicon, as I already mentioned. Let me scroll down a, a, a more. For those wanting to conduct more advanced word studies, a cross-reference to other lexicons is given at the end of the definition. So you have the definition by James Strong's based upon the Quran, based upon paganism, based upon all this extra biblical stuff. But in addition here, you're going to have references to the lexicons. And the lexicons are going to be the, uh, what do we have here? We have the Theological Word Book of the Old Testament. And that would be abbreviated T-W-O-T, all right? T-W-O-T. And then we also have Brown, Driver, Briggs, Hebrew, and English Lexicon. And that's going to be abbreviated B-D-B, all right? And so this is what's talking about. So it's talking about what you should do to understand God's Word using number 67, using something in addition to the Word of God. All right, so we see here, using the dictionary to do word studies. All right, careful, careful Bible students do word studies and the new Strong's expanded uh, exhaustive concordance enhanced, it's enhanced, ladies and gentlemen, Hebrew and Aramaic Dictionary. 
In that way, you develop an idea of its possible range of meanings and you can help clarify what is most likely the precise meaning in the specific Bible reference you are studying. So now when you look at the Strong's, you can get a wide range of meanings and you can be a judge over God's Word by determining in your own wisdom the precise meaning of God's Word. Wow, isn't it? We're learning all about James Strong, right? We're learning all about the Kabbalah. This is Kabbalistic Christianity, right? And guess what? James Strong, we're going to learn about the name of God here too. And to be honest with you, what's really disappointing is I remember the Strong's definition in the Hebrew. It's number 3068. I remember that. Wow. I'm not even looking at that, but I remember that. All right, so as we move forward, it's talking about, this is about being a careful Bible student. what's saying right here. So we're learning how to be a careful Bible student with James Strong, how to understand God's Word. Wow. Isn't it amazing? Well, let me continue. Now, there's three ways of using the dictionary in conjunction with the main concordance show you only a sampling of many ways, all right? So let us move forward, all right. And then it has the definition that I guess it looks Hebrew because I don't speak Hebrew, so it's all, <laughs> it's all Hebrew to me or all Greek to me. Um, I don't really understand that stuff, but let me move forward here. Original words, it says plan of the Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary. It says all the original words are presented in their alphabetical order created by Dr. Strong, the unbeliever Strong. And remember, McClintock and Strong were coming together. Why? Because they doubted God's word, right? <coughs> and a reason why is Dr. Schaff, what did he do? He didn't believe in the inspiration of God's word. He wasn't a Christian, ladies and gentlemen. And mm -hmm. who did he pick? He picked James Strong. Right. And James Strong comes together with McClintock, and they're coming forth and producing this great work. Well, McClintock dies. They only have three volumes, so James Strong finishes the remaining seven. And this is what we're driving it from, right? Um, this is where, okay, so I'm looking down, and wow, it has the, uh, it looks like Hebrew to me, ladies and gentlemen. And then it, over here it says special symbols, man. So now we have to learn the special symbols of understanding God's Word. All right, here we go. We have the plus sign would be addition. Denotes a rendering in the authorized version of one or more Hebrew or Aramaic words in connection with one. All right, so... And then we have a multiplication. A multiplication would be, uh, for example, Psalm 132, verse 15. I don't know what that is. And it says, um, 132, verse 15, the whole Hebrew phrase in which the, um, looks Hebrew to me, the Barak, number 1288, appears as a means of expressing a verb root emphatically. 132, 132 what, brother? 15. 132.15, do you want me to read that? Sure. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. All right. So that is in the Hebrew, it's Barak. Isn't that exciting? I mean, this is really amazing because that's really going to help me understand God's Word by understanding that. But we're going to do some examples here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we also have a degree symbol, which would be a zero. It denotes a corrected vowel pointing, which is different from the biblical text. Wow. Think about that for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is worth repeating. Yes, it looks like a little degree. It looks like a degree. It's a little circle, and it says, this denotes a corrected vowel pointing, which is different from the biblical text. So now they're saying, well, in the Hebrew, it's only consonants, so the vowel pointing, because we all know how to do vowel pointing in Hebrew, right? That's something really easy, right? So now they're saying, well, according to Strong's and according to these unbelievers that don't believe in the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, don't believe in hell, they don't believe in the resurrection, they're saying, well, this denotes a corrected vowel pointing, which is different from the biblical text, which is different from the Word of God. All right, so let me continue because we're learning all about the special symbols. All right, because this will make us really understand how the Word of God operates. All right, so continuing here, this is an example. Right here we have a parenthesis, 
All right. Now, the parentheses, it says, um, the only occurrence of Western in the authorized version. All right, so let's go to Numbers 34, verse 6. This is going to be really exciting because this is where you can be um, you could be so smart. You could be one of the finest minds and your heart can be the farthest point away from God. Isn't that where you want to be? So let's look at that. Numbers 34, 6. Numbers 34, and 6. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. All right. This shall be your west border. All right, so we're looking at number 34, verse 6. Focus on the word western, all right? Now it says, this is the only occurrence of western in the authorized version, which is the King James Bible. The underlying Hebrew word is yam. Yam, number 3220. So let me look that up, ladies and gentlemen. It is yam, H3220. Now it says right here, or let me it's pronounce yam. Yom. All right, didn't that make me sound like, hey, I'm looking at the Hebrew, and it's H3220, right? And what does it say here? Yeah, we're talking about the word Western, because that's what it was translated as. But wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, you're being Western a very order. careful student of the Word of God, right? So let me read what Strong's has to say. It says, from an unused root meaning to roar, a sea as in breaking in noisy surf or a large body of water, specifically with the article. The Mediterranean, sometimes a large river, or an artificial basin, locally the west, or rarely the south. All right, then we have C, like X faring man, shore, south, and western side or word. So now, as you, as being a very careful student of the Bible, you look this up, and remember you have, what does it say? You have a, a possible, as it says right here, in that way you develop an idea of its possible range of meanings. <laughs> now look at the range of meanings. See, the King James Bible says Western, but you go, no, I'm actually looking this up and I'm being a careful student. And you know what? It could be a sea. But then again, it could be a river. And then it could be west. But guess what? It could be south. It could be south. It could be southwest or western. That it is. could be um, it could be sea. It could be X faring man. Oh, it could be in the Mediterranean Ocean. Perhaps it's a location, ladies and gentlemen, because you're being a careful Bible student because this is how we uncover the meaning of God's Word, right? Wow. Hey, hang on. We're just beginning. Thanks, James Strong. What a contribution to the Laodicean Church. Hey, all right, so we're learning all about this. It, but it, then it says... But it's which is usually translated as C. So now, going to Strong's, it's not Western, but it's probably C. <laughs> but that's for you to decide because you become a judge over God's Word. It's okay, it's I've done it too. Isn't that, isn't that clear? No, it isn't. No. Is God the author of confusion, ladies and no. gentlemen? But uh, perhaps it, maybe Strong's can give us a better definition of God is not the author of confusion. Um, all right, so let's continue. Then we get into the brackets because we're learning all about special symbols in the introduction to the Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary. I'm reading right out of Strong's, ladies and gentlemen. What does it say? Well, it says here that um, Yom, number 3117, is translated as birthday in Genesis 420. All right, and it goes on and on. All right, so let's get into it. Let's just jump in there because there's so much, and then it has all these footnotes because you got to learn about the uh, the Quamets, the uh, Patach, the Shiva. That's an interesting name, Patach, Shiva Patak. Then you have the Sa Sera, innocent. Isn't this fascinating? The Shiva, all sorts of stuff about learning Hebrew and Aramaic. All right, so now let's go to something very important, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a lot of Kabbalists out there. Um, let us go to... Um, Did you want to go to Genesis? I got Genesis here. I am uh, changed my mind. I apologize. Okay. I'm going to no go, go to um, 3068. Okay. 
and it says here, so that'd be H3068, and it's um, it shows me how many times it's pronounced. It is Yehovah. Yehovah, oh, according to Strong's. Oh, oh, oh. But it says, wait a minute, it comes from number 1961. So now I've gone from number 3068. Now it's telling me to go to 1961. Isn't this exciting? I'm learning all about how to find the meaning of God's word. So now I got to go to 1961, H1961. I don't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. I used to do this stuff. Not very popular about it, but I'm venting because I'm not happy about the deception that has happened. So here's what it is. I'm going to turn this into the glory of Jesus Christ. 1961, it is Haya. 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 Yes. And then it says um, a prime root comparatively, compare it to 1933. So we could go to 1933, but let's continue. To exist, be or become, be, come to pass, always emphatically, and not a mere copular auxiliary. That's mentioned 75 times, but also beacon, altogether, become, accomplish, committed, break, cause, come, do, faint, fall, uh, follow, happen, have, last, pertain, quit, and then it goes on. Ha-ya means to become, occur, come to pass by. And then there's, thank goodness, Vine's Expository Dictionary put a whole bunch of stuff in there because I could read this much out of there in fine print from point number one, which has A, B, C, all the way up to 11 A, B, and C. Wow. Isn't this unbelievable? We're learning how to find God, the meaning of God's word according to Strong's, according to Shaft, according to a lot of pastors, right? And this forms the foundation of the modern Bibles that we use today, ladies and gentlemen, right? So now we're getting back to 3068. And what does it say? It says, the self-existent or eternal, well, it says Jehovah. Well, I like that because I can find that in the King James Bible. And then it says the Jewish national name of God. <laughs> the Jewish national name of God, which absolutely makes no sense. I, got, no. I, I exchanged a different Bible because you're probably tired of seeing the other ones, like a little bit smaller one. But I listed, I wrote down all the 12 sons of, of Israel or Jacob. And so it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. But it's not the Jewish national name of God. It's, it's the name of national Israel, folks. Important to understand that. So right off, right off the bat, there's some error. Then it goes into number one, the Tetragrammaton YHWH appears within its own vowels. And its exact pronunciation is debated. Yeah. So right off the bat, now it's telling me it's, it's, see, Strong is saying it's a Y sound. See, Strong is deviating. You know why? Because he's a Kabbalist. And where does he get that from? He gets it from G German Yiddish, folks. That's where sacred namers get this. Yes. That's where they got off track with the sacred names. You got it, my brother. Wow. That's what this is about. That's why we're going to be talking about wow. stuff that 99% of the people out there are not going to be happy with us. But that's okay. We're standing on God's Word. Amen. Amen. That's what it's about. So now we have Strong's Concordance and, and Madame Blavatsky and Schaff. And what is Schaff going? Come on, Hindus. Come on, Buddhists. Come on, Zen. Hey, come on. Theosophy Muslims, Society. Muslims. Yes. And we got all this, and we got Satanists coming in there. And then we have Ginsburg as part of the Revised Version Committee, and he wrote a book called The Kabbalah. Where do you think the sacred name movement comes from, ladies and gentlemen? Wow. All right. But continue, we're going to continue because we're learning all about H3068. Doesn't that make me, oh, yeah, it's H3068. And it's uh, Yahovah. Now, understand that this is. The Y sound, instead of the J sound, is Yiddish. And Yiddish is uh, German uh, Jewish. And understand that, isn't that where all the lexicons go to? They go, oh man, to understand the Word of God, you got to go through the German Greek lexicons. Yeah. Lytle Scott. You got to go to these people to really understand the Word of God. 
Remember, a backtrack here a little bit. We have Westcott and Hort. We have a corrupted, counterfeit Greek New Testament based upon Codex Vaticanus. You guessed it from the Vatican. Yep. Second Thessalonians 2, 3. Then it becomes Nestle Allen, the Novum Testamentum Grace, or whatever it is. And they're like in their 28th edition. They just can't get it right because the Word of God apparently is evolving continually. And then we have Metzger coming along, right? And where you have the United Bible Society, and then you have Martini. We talked about this, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see it all connected? Mm -hmm. But even more. So now we're learning about James Strong, and now they're saying, well, it's debated. They don't really know. According to the Kabbalists, they don't really know. So now we have, you can choose Jehovah, or Yehovah, or Yahweh, or Yahweh. So you have the Y or J sound. Hey, man, we're in the Laodicean church. You got A, B, C, or D. And if you don't have that, you don't like that, because we're learning to be a really good Bible student, you have to do the broad range meanings of words. Serve it all up cafeteria style. Pick what you want, that's, leave what you don't. That's right. Isn't this absolutely incredible? Because we get back here, it says there's possible range of meanings and you can help clarify what is most likely the precise meaning in the specific Bible reference you're studying. You can become God. Judging and, God's word, and all it did was cl to cloud everything. It is this didn't confusing? Make anything clear? Is this confusing, ladies and gentlemen? I think it is. I now, how much how much word of God am I studying? So, as what we're talking about, we're learning about the Tetragrammaton, and we're learning about this myth, this Kabbalistic myth that it was too sacred, and then they would talk about, oh no, Jehovah was this blending in of um, these two words, and that's why it is. And there's never mention of Jehovah before. 1520, according to Drusius, because it's against grammatical and historical propriety, which is a lie, which is a myth that's been inherited. Thank goodness to James Strong's for over a hundred years. This is what Christians have been using. Very dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the Laodicean time. I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the living word. We can find the meaning of God's word through his word. God bless you. Very dangerous times. Be a soldier. God bless you.